Hey guys, what's going on? What's going on there? It's Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and today I figured, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit of a thing, a little bit of a thing. Um, as I said, I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I am here i'm with you guys and this is another episode of coffee and conversation and this is the quick show where i just talk about a few little things just just a few little things like five minutes here ten minutes there i got my coffee and trailer for the joker okay the trailer for the joker because this thing man i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this i have been Batmaned and jokered out for about two years. I know. Hey, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Just follow me on this. All right. Um, I grew up watching Adam West. Okay. I grew up watching all the reruns of Adam West. Then we had Tim Burton when I thought this dude was that, like the best director ever. You know, I was a kid. So, you know, Tim Burton's Batman starring Michael Keaton, who I had been loving since Mr. Mom. Um, Kim Basinger, who was on the council of the people that helped me start liking girls when I was hitting puberty. You know, and then we had that franchise. And then we had that followed by the Schumacher franchise, which I ain't gonna lie. I liked Batman Forever when it came out for what it was, and it was fun, and it was very adolescent, and so was I. Um, and then we had the Nolan franchise, and then after the Nolan franchise, then we had the Snyder movies, and we've had so many of the cartoons and the animated series, and then Beware the Bat, and The Batman, and Batman Brave and the Bold. So after 33 years... Of Batman, 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 more Batman, more Batman. Um, I got a little tired. I'm like, okay, I get it. Batman is awesome. Um, I was kind of on that kick for Superman for a little while. Um, but given how the last few movies didn't actually treat him good, and the Captain America franchise reminded me what I like about Superman, I'm kind of back on a Superman kick like that. So, you know, hearing that. After Nicholson and Romero and how long has it been? Um, 27 years of Mark Hamill as the Joker, followed by Ledger's iconic, I hate that word, um, historic performance of the Joker, um, followed by Leto's Herculean attempt to do something different that honestly landed it went off like a lead balloon, okay? And I don't mean the legendary metal band. Um, and so I'm kind of like, okay, fine. You know, even Bender played a better Joker in Batman and the Red Hood, you know? Um, Joe, yeah, Joe D'Amato played, played a better, you know, played another aspect of the Joker. And, you know, D Keith David has played the Joker. So we've gone through as many Jokers as we have Batmans. Mm. because DC, or more to the point, Warner Brothers like to push what they think is safe. And now, though, ooh, well, I gotta say, now they push the Joker again, and I think, oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you guys some of the stuff that I think, but if you guys haven't seen it, let's take a look at it um, right, um, right now. This is the, um, this is the um, new Joker with Joaquin Phoenix playing the role. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look. Does it help to have someone to talk to? Coming out in October. Oh my God, that was oh seriously, serious. Wow, um, I've been kind of lax in my duties here because I didn't think. NP City for showing up. What's going on, guys? Yeah, the chat is over here talking about the incel Joker. Wow. Um, all right, so few thoughts. Um, few thoughts on this particular thing. Um, I got to say, I was over it. <laughs> I was over it with the first trailer. Because, you know, that first trailer was very much... Um, was very much like, oh, look, he's sitting in an elevator. Yay, yay, Joaquin Phoenix playing a crazy person. 
okay. Wow, you think I'll be able to get a movie role where I'll be able to play a dork? Um, because I'm not always a nice person. I'm not going to lie about that. But this is this is one of the big things that I was noticing about this. Um, oh, my God. This movie. Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to put the Joker aside for just a moment. And we are going to talk about a particular television show that I um that I stopped watching a long time ago. No, I don't mean Beverly Hills Teens. Um I am talking about Gotham, okay? And Gotham is a special kind of complication for me because um, again, I said 30 something years of Batman, 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 Batman. And, um, one of my complications with Gotham and with the whole Batman franchise is that my favorite character in Batman has never really been explored except in one of the 11 titles that feature Batman or something related to it and no my favorite character is not Batman no guys it's not Alfred my favorite character in Batman is Gotham City okay the most important character in the whole freaking franchise we never really get to discover Gotham City we don't get to explore we don't really get to see why it's so messed up and the TV show Gotham promised it was going to be about that. And I'm like, cool, let's take a look at why Gotham is so bad and why Batman's job is so hard, okay? Other than the editorial mandate of there will always be crime in Gotham, okay? All right, cool. Why? That's what I want to know. What is so messed up about this city that Batman at his best can only keep it crazy? <laughs> That's as best as it can go. Um, and it started with that. But what I'm seeing in this trailer, this Joker trailer, is, all right, you can say what you want about Joaquin Phoenix, all right? You, you really can, because a lot of people will. But if you take a look at this, this city is dirty. <laughs> this city is dirty. It, it really reminds me of an East Coast city um, in the 1970s. And that is, that, that's a really thing. You know, in the 1970s, um, the economy was not that great. But if you take a look at this trailer, this is over from E.T. Um, Entertainment tonight. And, uh, yeah, if you look on the left of the screen, you got all this garbage piled up. You got, like, old cars busted up. And, you know, you just got the dude walking around. And um, there are 100 videos already talking about his relationship with his mom, trying to put stuff together and all that stuff. But I just want to explore the city, okay? Um, and if you take a look, like, again, that that's straight out of The Exorcist right there. And we know that The Exorcist was 1970s Washington, D.C. And that wasn't, I mean, like, I don't want to fall down that flight of stairs. It's probably like San Francisco or Boston. It just... The city itself looks grimy. Um, if you've got really high resolution, you can even see the graffiti on each of the walls there. So it's like, it's dark, it's dank. Um, and this particular Joker is, you know, he he's not... Now, it kind of reminds me of season one Gotham, where you saw the relationship between the Penguin and his mom. But, um, you know, here we are, dude is working and you can always tell a terrible terrible economy by the types of jobs that are available and as we see with our main character here we've got he's one of them sign spinners he's like i'm a clown i'm spinning a sign and then you got them punks you know and he's like give me my sign oh we'll give you your sign you know so you got um so what you end up with is you got Bad teenagers, a dirty city, um, garbage piled up. And as you saw in the trailer, it showed the asylum, you know, the outside of Gotham, uh, of Arkham, right? You, you've got, 
you've got the you've got Arkham right there. It kind of looks like General Hospital in L.A. That's probably where they filmed it. But they put the bars on the windows and CGI. But even that is all dirty and messed up. You know, I mean, you got all that going for it. And even on the inside of the asylum, it's all dirty and grimy. And it's got the graffiti happening. And he's just like, I'm sitting in an elevator and a dude is going nuts. Like, right next to me, you know? Why is he in Gotham again? Or why is he in Arkham? Um, whatevs. You know, you, um, I don't really care. I'm trying not to... I'm trying not to do all the fan theory thing before I go into the movies and see it. I've all, I already did that with Captain Marvel and Shazam and Avengers Endgame and all that other stuff. My brain is tired. But I'm just looking at how messed up this city is. And how this city this gotham city could create a rogues gallery like batman how it can create a batman um there is one moment in the in the um <clears throat> in the trailer that i do want to go over and that's the joker smile because we've seen a whole bunch of different joker smiles but if you take a look ah, creepy if you take a look at what he does here and he's like Ugh. Boom, right there. Did, did you catch that? I'm going to go back just a hot second. All right, he's um, he's pulling the smile to his face, play, you know, pretty much doing probably what Keen Phoenix does every Monday night. But he lets it go, and he's really trying not to cry. You can see the makeup running. It's a fantastic makeup job, a really good acting job. Um... Yeah, again, it's very, very Pagliacci, very classic, um, very classic stuff. And again, um, I'm guessing this was Chicago because I remember this scene from Flatliners back in like 87, you know. But again, just more grime, a lot of gray. Um, he's on the train in New York or what looks like New York. And he's just having a bad day. And then some dudes come and beat him up like the people in Gotham are terrible. <laughs> they're terrible people and the city itself is run down and all dirty and messed up and i'm like man i'm getting geeked out for this movie just because i want to see um like again i've been reading comics pretty much my entire life and they always talk about how terrible gotham is you know how even superman couldn't fix gotham if batman let him in to try and the show Gotham kind of showed that with the rise of the mob, um, how the corruption is in there, you know, and how it was almost impossible to get out. That's what I liked about season one before they turned it into um, guess which Batman villain you're looking at this week. I, I forgave him with the Joker. I forgave him with the Riddler. But as soon as they brought on Poison Ivy and Catwoman and the adventures of um, child abuse, Alfred and the baby bat. I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Just stop it all the way across the board. But this movie is looking like it's giving me what that show promised. And, um, the only time I've seen it, I mentioned earlier about how one comic book has really tried to delve into that particular thing. And that comic book I'm talking about, of course, is Gotham Central. Um, and that was the Batman book or the book about Gotham City PD, that didn't feature Batman. It, it was not a Batman book. It was about the cops and how terrible their job is. And um, so I'm wondering, like, okay, how are they going to make, um, how, um, how <laughs> am I going to watch this movie? And, you know, there's going to be a bunch of comparisons about him and Ledger and a whole bunch of questions about DiCaprio and all that jazz. But Joaquin Phoenix is an amazing actor and has been an amazing actor. Like he's got a better, he's actually got a better, like higher quality and deeper bench than Ledger. Okay. Cause he's been in the business a lot longer and he and Ledger were really close. I mean, they were friends. Um, so I mean, he, he's got his stuff down. I'm not concerned about him at all. You know, um, check out, um, I think it's Walk the Line with, when Joaquin Phoenix plays Johnny Cash. Check out 8mm. Um, check out any, like, you know, um, the movie, I believe it was Her, where he fell in love with and had a really heartwarming, um, 
heartwarming, like almost gut wrenching relationship with Scarlett Johansson's voice when you know when somebody reprogrammed Alexa to be Scarlett Johansson and he falls in love with AI and it sounds comedic but it was really good so um and again you look at Joaquin Phoenix and he plays sympathetic very well and I'm going they're making a movie about a bad guy you know so how am I supposed to root for or at least empathize or empathize with or have sympathy for a mass murdering terrorist like the Joker. Um, and they're showing like, it wasn't just one bad day. Like the killing joke kind of puts along. It's like what this movie is showing so far. Oh, see, I'm doing it again. I'm doing that whole speculation thing. But what the movie is really showing me is how a city like systemic poverty um, or, you know, the cycle of poverty and systemic corruption and just being around crappy people when your life is falling apart, the chewing up and spitting out of somebody who was already kind of on the edge. And we live in like this golden age of television where you see it happen to suburbanites, you know, with Breaking Bad and Sons of Anarchy and Better Call Saul. You know, these are all people that were born into pretty good circumstances that end up going bad because they were either monsters from the start or they were caught up in corruption. But what I can tell from this is the Joker, um, I forgot the name that he's using. I think it's like Eddie something or Freddie. But, um, you know, this dude was pretty much just born in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong circumstances. And eventually, um, I mean, looking at Joaquin Phoenix's face, face because you know he's he's getting up there in years for Hollywood but he's like what 50 something um after a lifetime not just a lifetime but multiple lifetimes as in they grew up they became old enough to have a kid and that kid could now be old enough to be in college or out of college and with kids so he's like at grandpa age finally loses it <laughs> and that's a big thing so um, there's a lot of comparisons between this and Taxi Driver, and I can see it. You know, Taxi Driver, um, Martin Scorsese's 1970s masterpiece um, featuring Robert De Niro at his hottest he's ever been. And um, so it, it's a fact. It's intrinsic. Every, like, 19-year-old girl that I've shown scenes from Taxi Driver 2 are like, oh, my God, he's so hot. Who is that? I'm like, that was Robert De Niro in 1974. Oh, my God, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this, this is very gritty, very grimy, very down-to-earth. And um, if they're going that route, okay, they're going that route. Um, I'm hoping they keep it gritty and grimy for like the bad street level people and just a little brighter like they did with Shazam and Aquaman for the aspiring or inspiring heroes. But when I'm looking at this, what I'm looking at when I see this is like, dude, you're bad and I can kind of see it. I can kind of see what drove you to this place. You know, don't get me wrong. I want somebody to take you down and it's probably going to be the Batman in a later on movie. But so far, this movie is showing me that Gotham City can tear someone down. And I'm really, I'm, I'm liking all that. So hopefully I get what I'm hoping for. And that's the thing. I'm not trying to speculate to see all this. What I want to see is a Gotham City that can take a person that's a little bit wonky and beat them down enough to make a Joker or a Riddler, or a Zazz, or a Hugo Strange, you know, um, or a Batman, you know, just a city whose character itself, whose very essence, can tear someone down and make them put on a bat suit, or make them put on a brightly colored red and green suit <laughs> um, t to hang out in the dark and be shot at by bad guys, or, you know, to put on a green suit, or to go crazy and try and, you know, make up for one's own sterility by taking control over plants. Or, you know, somebody that, you know, has so much arrested development and lives in such a fantasy world that they make mind control things to make people relive their Alice in Wonderland fantasies. Like, I want to see a city where, in the audience, I can look at the city and say, you know what, that place would break somebody. You know, it, it really would. Like, there are some people that are born there that never get out. 
Um, but if you notice, no one ever moves to Gotham City. Like, people don't go, oh, man, I just won the lottery. I'm going to move to the Narrows. Or, all right, mom left me an inheritance and all this stuff is down and I've got millions and millions of dollars. You know what? I want to move to Gotham City. That seems like a place to raise my kid. No, no. No one does that in the comics. Even me saying that, you're kind of laughing a little bit. Hopefully. And um, so I want to see a city that sparks that kind of thing. Ouch, I totally just hit the mic. And if we're very, very lucky, if we're very, very lucky, um, that's what this movie will give us. So let me know what you guys think. Show me. Let me know what you guys um, come up with and, um, and, you know, the comments that you guys think of. And um, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I just want to talk about those two things. And um, I got to get these ready for editing and, you know, popping up on the on the YouTube channel and all that jazz. But, um, thank you guys for showing up. Thank the, um, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you guys over in MP City, you know, that came on in. And, um, with that, um, I just got to do my little outro real quick here. Again, you know, behind the scenes stuff, isn't that fun? But, with all that, I'm going to say thank you guys for showing up today. And uh, feel free to drop us an email at all of the all of the places, like at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, thanks for watching this live, if you guys are watching it live. And thank you guys for tuning in on YouTube, of course. I'm tr I tried my best not to make a clickbait thumbnail. Um, but um, check out the rest of our archives, see what we think on stuff. Follow us on Twitter and all of the, all of the social media things. Look at our SoundCloud over at... at at soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p um as a gift to all the people that do that come on down to the soundcloud download the audio listen to us or you know even use the clips to make fun of us in the future because well i'm actually pretty confident about um who i am and what i do so you guys can make fun of me that's fine too and please join them um, deckers on the book on facebook that's uh the facebook group deckers on the book and um Check out the stuff that we make, the places that we're going, the stuff that we're working on. Um, and with that, I'm going to say um, thank you guys for showing up one more time. And if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies that make you smile because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Grid, the Cinematic Source. We're saying thank you guys for showing up. And we will talk to you guys later.